Hey everybody, Brian Zane here with Jay Biggs, and it's time for another video in this week, WrestleMania Week 2021, The Grind. WrestleMania is just a few days away. It's going to be a two-night event once again. And now, unlike last year's WrestleMania, there's going to be a crowd there. We have seen smatterings of people in the Performance Center and stuff as we built to the Thunderdome and the Capitol Wrestling Center. Right. But now we're going to have like thousands of people at Raymond James. I'm interested to see the layout of this. Maybe one of the, like the floor has people. Maybe the next deck up has the, the screens mm -hmm. with people. Then there's another deck with people. You know, I don't, I have no clue. I wonder like if people are actively like competing, like who's going to be the first match? Who wants to be the first match out? So we're going to go through this massive event across two nights, beginning with night one, the Raw Tag Team Championships as Kofi and Xavier of the New Day, defending as AJ Styles in the debuting Amos, no pressure for Jordan Mog being here. He's going to have his in-ring debut at well, WrestleMania. Hey, Fandango did it, so why not, right? He pulled he, it he, Yeah, he can. So I think it's going to be a bump fest. At least I hope it is so they make Omos look good. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him like absorb like chairs and things that have like, disintegrated upon touching him. So whatever he does is going to be absolutely just devastating. <laughs> it's going to be like a Trouble in Paradise. is going to be like a fly hitting him. Like, yeah, it'll be like, pew, <laughs> just flies off when he tries to do it. Are, are you thinking this might be the worst AJ Styles match ever at WrestleMania? Well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> if you look at the sample size, it's hard to pick a bad one out of those. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a bad match. I think it will be different than what we're used to seeing in AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Uh, it's going to be a curious test for the other three guys to like make Amos look good. That is the primary goal here. Right. Um, so we'll see if they can pull, they can pull it off. As far as like who I think is going to win, I think it's time for AJ and Amos to finally reach the top of the mountain after all that fighting together, and they're going to become the new tag team champions. Because I mean, like, if you have Amos and this big stage, and you've built him up as this just impervious to pain absorber of impact, like, how do you not have him win the belts? So who do you think is going to win the belts? Oh, of course, AJ and Omos. All right. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good for AJ to get that win back after losing three straight. Braun Strowman finally gets his hands on Shane McMahon in the steel cage. And this one, like, I'm so, like, I'm, uh, I'm going to say it right now. I'm sick of seeing Shane McMahon on TV. It's like, I feel every time he's there... It's a law of diminishing returns, where when he first came back, it was great. And then every storyline he's been in ever since just feels like it's been just like less and less interesting. Right. You know, I don't know. It's just that this, this, I'm really not into this storyline no. for some reason. I really thought it would play more off of the Raw Underground, if that makes any sense. Like, like, like we would maybe get that, what's the Baba Tumbe or well, yeah. whatever. Well, what's his name? What's the guy? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dabakato. Yeah, Dabakato. But isn't that interesting where it's like the last time we saw Braun, he, he was the la he was the champion of Raw Underground, basically, because he beat Dabakato in that match. Well, right. And they killed off Raw Underground. It was Underground. over. It was over. I figured they would carry that out as maybe a storyline like, you ruined Raw Underground or something. Why you know? did they talk about that? That's Dabakato. Where yeah. the hell has he been? The only person that's assisted Shane McMahon through this whole entire thing was Slimer from the Ghostbusters. Braun's oh, WrestleMania record, his accolades of WrestleMania, are just a big potpourri of weird shit. It is, <laughs> It's actually. like nothing you would expect a guy just from the eyeball test for Braun Strowman to go through. Um, this is going to be one of those frustrating ones where The Miz somehow wins by Braun doing something that backfires. Like, I want to see him just probably throw somebody through the cage. The Miz? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, The Miz? You just said The Miz. The Miz. Oh, yeah, because you know why I said The Miz? Because I was thinking about Mania in New York with oh, Shane and Miz. right. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, so it's going to be Shane and Braun, and Shane is going to outsmart Braun. And Braun's going to do something that causes Shane to, like, win on accident. And then, oh, Braun is stupid. Right. And we're going to take this over to the next pay-per-view because that's what we do. Shane McMahon feuds don't just end at one pay-per-view. They never have. It's just like this goes on for the trilogy. Oh, dear God. So I think Shane's going to win. What about you? Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to go with Braun. You think ba 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 Braun they, is going to beat Shane McMahon? B -b -b better <laughs> Night 1 continues with Cesaro's first WrestleMania singles match against the self-appointed Drip King in WWE, Seth Rollins. How about those suits? Is that Drip? I mean, I, I know yeah. that you know, wrestling fans probably are overusing the word Drip now. It's not it's not ours, but that's what Seth has adopted Only Ric now. Flair has the Drip. It's one of a lot of matches across both nights where it's like, damn, on paper, this is going to be awesome. Like, this is like classic, you know, Ring of Honor stuff we're seeing here with Cesaro and Seth. I'm really excited for this yeah, one. I, I actually think this is going to maybe be the best pure wrestling match over both nights. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has its possibility of being. That being said, I mean, anybody that's worked with Seth Rollins is being elevated, especially WrestleMania. 
So in my opinion, this is, I mean, I hope that they give Cesaro the win. They may actually not and give Cesaro a win at like the next pay-per-view or something yeah. like that. That's kind of how I feel like it's going to go. So I am going to predict the winner being Seth Rollins, but I hope Cesaro wins. I think it's going to be Cesaro winning this first one. I agree with you. There's probably going to be a rematch out of this. Even if it doesn't go anywhere, I think that Cesaro, or if he ends up losing back to Seth in a rematch, I think my, my gut pick is Cesaro's going to win. Also on night one, we've got this tag team turmoil match where the winners face and challenge the women's tag champs, Nia and Shayna on night two. So you got Mandy, Rose, and Dana Brooke. You've got uh, Lana and Naomi. you got the Riot Squad. You've got Natalia and Tamina. As of this recording, Carmella and Billy Kay are not officially on, but they're hope they're going to be on, right? I mean, they built it on SmackDown and on Raw, so you'd think they're going to be there. So, you know, as far as, again, another women's match with some not great builds because, like, you know, Nia and Shayna have been cannibalizing the fucking top contenders and the champions in the singles division for the last two months. There's no one to pick because they're all booked so terribly. If I had to pick one, shitty. I would... I don't know. I'm legitimately, like, racking my brain over who I think is probably the, the best idea to win. I'm probably going to say Riot Squad. They're going to win the, the turmoil match itself. And then if we, I mean, who do you think? Do you, do you care? Do you? <laughs> well, I, I'm just perplexed that whoever, out of all four of those teams in this turmoil match, who, they're actually going to get exposure on night one and night two. Yeah, so who do you think is going to be that team to get uh, both nights? Can you get, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's going to be them, but I'm going to pick them just because, just how weird would it finally be to culminate and have uh, Tamina versus... Uh, uh, what, Nia, Nia Max. Jax, so, 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 fuck it. Nia, Nia and Samina. Or <laughs> okay, whatever. Or so Samina and, and um, we have Natalia. A we have a difference of opinion on who's going to win that turmoil match. But I guess if we want to jump ahead to night two, just for this moment, and go into that tag title match, do you think Natalia and Tamina would beat Nia and Shayna? No. Okay. No, they shouldn't. All right. Well, then in my hypothetical, if the Riot Squad go on to challenge, I think they'll actually end up winning because... That's what happens. Shayna's gonna, you know, slip on a banana peel and lose somehow. <laughs> In a match that was adjusted just on Monday night, now what was what was originally Bad Bunny versus The Miz is now a tag team match playa. Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus The Miz and Morrison. I think that this is going to be a better match than just Miz and Bad Bunny singles because I think you could have like you can space out Bad Bunny's involvement a little bit more. Right. Have you heard how he, apparently he's been he's been training at the Performance Center like every day since the Royal Rumble? He's just going there all the time. as no, Bad Bunny. I think that's freaking awesome, though. I mm -hmm. mean, like if he's really trying, that's one thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I will say at WrestleMania, there's only been a couple celebrities, in my opinion, that haven't delivered, like like maybe Snooki or <laughs> yeah. something, you know. But well, like she did the springboard, the hands. Yeah, that was impressive. Was... But I'm sorry, like Money Mayweather. I, I don't care what anybody says that match was awesome. Yeah, that's what LT the... LT. He pulled it off. He did it. He did a great job. He did better than expected. Yeah, <laughs> I think that yeah, the the bar is set so high now for celebrities who are wrestling now. Outsiders. Look at what happened with Pat McAfee and Shaq. Who do you think's uh, going to be winning this one, Jay? Uh, I, of course, Priest and Bunny. You think, duh. Yeah, you think so? You, duh. No, man, I think Bad Bunny's taking the pin. No. Oh, you think he's no. taking the three? Yeah, no, I think that, yeah, I agree that uh, the, the star, of the guest of honor here, Bad Bunny, is going to be winning this one. Damien Priest will hit his finisher probably on The Miz. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll get and a, bunny, splat, a, get a splash. splash. A splash. A bunny splash. Uh, a bunny hop. The bunny hop. The bunny hop, by God. My God, it's he, the bunny hop. He puts on, like, the head that Justin Gabriel's old bunny oh, suit. God, puts that no. on. <laughs> So the X is on it, so it's been modified. So, yeah, the, the celebrity guest star is going to be winning this one for sure. Sasha Banks defends the SmackDown Women's title against Bianca Belair. Biggs, at the time this match was like made official uh, after the Royal Rumble, when Bianca won, I think a lot of people thought this should be the main event of one of the nights. And up until a few weeks ago, I might have agreed with them. But the booking for this feud has been so bad since Bianca made her intentions known. It's just like, I understand why it's not the main event, but it's not, right. it's only because... There's an the, argument for it, obviously. It, it's only because the, the company, like, sabotaged it so badly, I think. Compare it to the match we're going to be talking about next, right. and how you build up a challenger and a champion, you make them look strong, and they just, we'll do the exact opposite of that with Sasha and Bianca. Like, if you want to get down to it, all of the builds for all the women's matches at Mania this weekend yeah, have been the worst, the worst out of everything going on right. on this show. So with this one, though, I'm curious about it because I have a scenario which we'll talk, which we could talk about a little later when we get to night two. But I think that Bianca is going to win this one and become the new champion. 
What about you? I think so too. And the and and one of my predictions is that we're gonna see like a maybe a camera person or somebody be Bailey. Oh, you think know. Bailey's gonna be involved? I, I think she she might come back and cost her the belt at Mania or something. Yeah, you know? that's a possibility because I was thinking the other day that oh, I think that maybe Bailey's not on Mania and then like she'll come and she'll challenge like whoever wins this one or she'll like she'll challenge Bianca after winning it and she'll be the next challenger uh, as a good heel foil for Bianca. Um, but I mean, the possibility of Bailey being involved in the match itself that's also possible. So like I mentioned, the polar opposite of how to build a champion and a challenger for a WrestleMania title match is on display here. You've got two guys who were built very well, Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, right. for the WWE Championship. Two guys who have built as absolute unbeatable killers. Uh, only in the screwiest of circumstances are these guys losing matches in the last three or four months. Right. And so, yeah, that's how you build a main event. And so they did it with these guys, and I think it's going to be a very hard-hitting matchup. I've got so many concerns about how we're going to, like, lose somebody in the main event picture here. And what I mean by that is that is that Lashley's either going to lose, and, and, and it's going to make, like, a one-month reign. It's still not going to make much sense in my head, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I just can't figure that out, why they would do that to him, and why they broke up the Hurt Business. Uh, that's a whole other... <laughs> we have an episode we could do on that one. I'm pissed <laughs> off about that. Right, me too. But, but that being said... You also don't want Drew to lose. This is his first WrestleMania back, you, you, you know, like or this is his first WrestleMania in front of people, mm -hmm. you know, whereas last year was supposed to be that crowning moment. So I don't really want him to lose either. I kind of want to see that happen. Yeah. I don't know. I, gosh, I don't... I'm, it, it, I'm not sure where to go with this one. Yeah, though. I mean, I feel the exact same way. Kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. You don't right. want to see either guy lose, but somebody's got to win. Unless they really want to piss people off and have it ended in no contest. Oh, dear which, lord. That's like nightmare Maybe scenario. Retribution will attack them. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. That ship has sailed. <laughs> God, if I had to really just kind of hunker down and pick one, I would say Drew wins it back. Honestly, like I hate to do it, but I have a feeling that's where they're going. I think Shane. I think a four way would have been better this year, mm -hmm. like with Sheamus and you know him. Who, and... who, who the fourth man had been? Because I would have argued for a triple threat before they made this, the universal title triple threat. Um, Goldberg. She... <laughs> no, no, don't you put that evil on me. <laughs> and made Sheamus also into that main event picture. Now I feel like Sheamus is. Just back to being, you know, like he could still hang out with Kevin Owens at, at the at the the craft beer bar. I think you know, that I don't know. Well, yeah, I felt that like Sheamus doing the thing with Drew. I thought that was a bit short lived. You really could have stretched that out into Mania, but I think you didn't want two triple threats for your top titles. That seems a bit uh, redundant or repetitive. Right. So I get why it's like I get it. Well, maybe it was originally supposed to be a triple threat, and because that other change had to happen, they were like, oh, mm -hmm. we got to pivot, and that's why things got screwy this last month as far as the belt. I don't know. All I know is that they're about to lose steam on one of two people. It's either Bobby <laughs> Lashley or Drew McIntyre. I really hope it's neither of them, but they're, they're gonna have to, something's going to have to happen. If anyone can absorb the loss more, in my opinion, it's Bobby Lashley. But I think he, it, it would have to be like a very a well protected. screwy finish. It had to be a, a screwy or very well protected. And then like the rebound from that is very important. Before we talk about night two, I guess we should pivot backward and talk about WrestleMania SmackDown on Friday because right. they have so many matches across two nights. We just can't possibly fit any more of them in there. So let's talk about the SmackDown tag title match. It's Rudolph defending against the Mysterious. Mysterios, the Street Profits, and the Alpha Academy. Um, I really don't care about any of these teams right now. I think the Street Profits, they had their time with the belts. The Alpha Academy is like, that's the one I'd probably be most interested in having the belts go to. Because I like Chad Gable. I like Otis. To me, they're starting to work together as a team. I don't like the <clears throat> team, personally. I, I wish they both did separate things. It took me a minute to get used to it. Like, but Otis is a heel now and not being so kind of like confused over his teachings and stuff. Like... That's the that's the little shift that has made me embrace them a bit more. I guess you're right. I think so. Yeah, I, and I don't really care about Dolphin or Bobby Roode as champions, honestly. And the Mysterios is a good story to have Ray and Dominic as the champions together. That'd be pretty cool. That's what I think's gonna. That's my pr personal that's, prediction is that we're gonna have the Mysterios at WrestleMania win a belt together. That would know? be a really cool moment, especially when you think about Mania or Mania 22 when Ray won the world title and stuff. Like the kind of a cool kind of circling back moment. But, uh, yeah, I guess, you know what? You've actually made me change my mind. I'm going to go, my, my, my pick has gone from the Alpha Academy to the Male Stereos. And then they've moved the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal to SmackDown. It's not going to be on the show, the regular WrestleMania show this year. Uh, man, how the mighty has fallen, man. From debuting at WrestleMania 30 with all that hype, and then it's just gone downhill since then. Right. Didn't have it last year for understandable reasons. And now they bring it back, but it's on, tele it's on Fox. It's not on 
Peacock, right. I guess. I thought it was going to be like this prestigious thing, you know, back in the day. But but now I feel like it's going to be something to maybe elevate people. I thought at 30 they were going to elevate Cesaro. Here we are finally getting a, a one-on-one yeah. WrestleMania match with him. That's six-year uh, payoff. Right, man. a six-year seven, payoff. Seven year payoff. I think this year we're going to get somebody pushed that you wouldn't expect. It's SmackDown anyways. Who the hell cares? I think <laughs> I think we're going to see T-Bar. I actually agree with that idea. I like the idea of somebody from Retribution winning because right. they're kind of in the wind right now. So like either I'd probably say either T-Bar or Mace would be my picks of the two to win. Right, no. And then absolutely. from there, whoever wins, it could be you know kind of like shed their identity as a retribution guy and be more themselves that'd be kind of interesting but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with you on this one and say that uh you know kind of a i don't know where prediction but i think you know i guess we're in agreement that t-bar is gonna win well when we talked about drew and bobby we mentioned how sheamus is kind of left out on the outside looking in for that one but this i guess is his consolation prize not a bad place to land you've got him to, uh, challenging riddle for the u.s championship mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be a great match. It's going to be fun to watch. If you like just the big smacks and the the, the connection and the physicality, then these two are going to bring it. Because I think those two probably do it better than anyone else right now on the roster. Right, right. No, um, I absolutely believe exactly what you just said, too, about that match. And my personal thought, I actually think Sheamus is going to win this match. I agree. Like I said, I think that this match is kind of a consolation prize for Sheamus, um, kind of not being in the title picture right now, the main title picture. So this, to me, feels like a good way to get to that um, and have Sheamus kind of be a champion as well. Maybe we can have like Sheamus and whoever wins the title in the main event uh, night one to uh, mm -hmm. to uh, challenge and have a champion versus champion kind of thing. The, I, I don't know. All I know is that it, the payoff for this match, I swear to God, I am going to laugh so hard, and you guys are going to see it on the review. <laughs> if they have Matt Riddle take that brogue kick, and he's laying there after he gets the pin, and there's freaking birds swirling around his head. <laughs> they keep I, would the birds love, there. I would love to see that. That'd be amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't wait. It is a match that I almost thought we were never going to see at WrestleMania, and now we're getting it, and it's so awesome, but at the same time, it's like a poison chalice. You've got Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, the best friends, the eternal rivals, finally get their one-on-one -on -one match at Mania. And Logan Paul is there too. Like, why? There's just not enough of a cool draw, I guess. You gotta bring in Logan Paul. I mean, is he from Montreal as well? No, I think it's just, <laughs> they're just trying to get that WrestleMania celebrity kind of shine on the thing, but it's like, as opposed to like Bad Bunny working his way through since Royal Rumble, this one just feels really forced, and it feels like, I said this on the SmackDown review, whatever he does, he'll inevitably do something in this matchup. Whatever it is, I don't think it's going to be worth the effort made to bring him in. I hope it doesn't, like, sully the finish or really, like, ruin what could be a great match with Owens and Zayn. I think it will still be fine, but, I mean, just, like, as the purest in me, I'm like, boo, celebrities. Like, they can be good, but I think, like, this didn't need that. To be honest with you, I don't know what I would do in this situation if I was WWE as far as, like, is making it have more stature. I probably wouldn't bring in Logan Paul. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I mean I, you know what? I think the way people, the way you and I react to Logan Paul is the way other white people react to Bad Bunny being involved in the program. Oh. Who, who's this person? I, If I don't know who they yeah, are, then clearly like, no one else does. He doesn't rap in English. There's no way he could be a star. <laughs> right? Really? I think Kevin's going to win here. Kevin Owens is going to win. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's I, no way. <clears throat> I mean, he's got to beat the conspiracy theories out of this guy. Yeah. I can't. But no, because then uh, there's a part of me that wants to see Sammy win, because then we'll see him do more of his victory dance that he had when Logan mm -hmm. Paul came out. we got to see more of right, the dancing. Right. Uh, Big E will defend the Intercontinental Championship for about the 14th time against Apollo Crews, and now it's going to be a Nigerian drum match, whatever that means. We heard we heard Apollo Crews. We heard a Nigerian Apollo Crews in his Nigerian accent talk about his Nigerian ancestors, Whoa. and they want a Nigerian drum match. They're really hammering that word home. Are we gonna get? Are the screens just gonna be close-ups of drums being hit? Is that or like are there gonna be people around the ring doing? I, it? I don't know. I'm picturing for some weird reason, even though it's not him. I'm picturing Sting's entrance at WrestleMania 31 with all the guys out there with yeah. the drums like around ringside, and then like he's slamming his head in the drum, and you hear the drum noise or something. <laughs> I don't. Freaking no. Yeah. Well, who, who do you think is going to win this one? I, I, I personally think that Apollo's finally going to win because he's they, they've wrestled enough times. He's sure to strike oil by now. And also because it's going to be in his element. Because, I mean, if Big E wins again, then, like, they need to, like, jettison Apollo Crews off to Raw and let's not be involved with him ever again with Big E. Smack, or, yeah, off to NXT or something. I don't I think Big E is going to take the win. I, I mean, honestly, I do think that Big E is going to win this one. But it's kind of weird. I mean, maybe it's the pre-show match. There's no, I would hope there's no pre-show. I would hate for them to have, like, 
you know, for the first WrestleMania back with fans to have a match as fans are still like, filing in. I don't right. want that. That would be weird. I don't I want pre-show right. matches. I just want them to open up, bam, crowd, pyro, and here's wrestlers. It's time for the Crispy Fiends WrestleMania return. It's his first match since the Inferno match at TLC against Randy Orton. I'm sorry the graphics not updated. There was no like Crispy Fiend PNG out there. And by the way, I just want to say one thing for the record. Yes, we are using the same lower third graphics as we did last year, but in fairness, so is WWE. So I think it's cool for us. I mean, what did you think when you saw Melted Fiend coming out from the ring at Fastlane? It can't go on that long. I mean, the character. I, and that's why I was thinking. You know, it was like, like they've got to do something. Like I'm, I'm personally in my mind, I feel like by this time next year, by WrestleMania next year, the original Bray Wyatt will be back. I mean, at some point, it's going to like eat it on itself, and like, yeah, somehow Bray is going to break the space time continuum and go back to being normal right. self. I don't know how they're going to get to that, but dude, I, I just the, just the Booker in me. You know, I was sitting there one time and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, what are they going to do? It's like maybe what they're going to do is like how they did with uh, Abyss and WCW, right? Like how he became the lawyer. WCW. Oh, you mean? Or, or in, in TNA? Yeah, and and so how he became the lawyer. So maybe he comes back as as Chris P. Fiend, the the lawyer. <laughs> It was like his hair pulled back or something, a lawyer outfit. I don't know. In the mask and everything, he's right. just still talking. He's wearing Chris a suit P. now. Fiend. So he's just all good. I think that Bray is going <laughs> to win this one. I'm kind of disappointed we're not doing cinematic style. Like now that we have fans, there's no excuse to go back to that. But I think that would help serve the purpose of this story a lot better. The swamp match was the worst. Last it was, year, dude. We don't it need was. that again. Uh, right. And with Bray Wyatt, it literally it's a fifty fifty shot if, and, if the match is going to be good. And we remember the cinematic. worms on the on the the ring during WrestleMania. Oh yeah, look at the worms back on the apron you know. <laughs> on, the, on the ring. Oh my god, I have I mean flashbacks to Orlando now and that fucking match. But this one, it's going to be different for sure. Now the, the the dynamic has changed a little bit. I think Bray is going to win here very decisively. Maybe he will not delete uh, Orton like he did John Cena last year, but it'll be a, a pretty resounding defeat, I think. My personal opinion, I think Orton is going to do something completely dastardly and destroy him to where he goes He away. will just literally behead him. Yeah, like, like some, well, <laughs> maybe. I can picture a thing where it's like his, his you know, the Bray is like kind of halfway under the ring or something, and Orton's got a giant machete for some reason. He's just, bam! <laughs> he's in the prop section. He's like, oh, Drew McIntyre's sword. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, yeah, <laughs> you know? how else are you going to write your way out of this one? You'd literally just, just murder him. At the, yeah, at this point, I, they, they should have, like, you know, like Dade County, like, sheriff standing by. You know, <laughs> I don't know. But I think Orton's going to destroy him, and then hopefully he goes away. But then that also leaves Alexa Bliss, you know, who's going to need, like, child counseling services after all this. Because, you know, because she's, after all, she is clearly a little girl. <laughs> if they do go with Bray Wyatt winning, though, like, where do you go from there with that 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 swamp monster looking character I, I would bet it's almost a thing where he becomes kind of like the servant of alexa where she's the one pulling the strings and he's just kind of like a lumbering just like yeah kind of like a bodyguard almost i could see that yeah i could see that as well kind of like um I'm trying to think of some yeah, she's in control kind of like bioshock and the, you know, the big daddies and the little sisters the last women's match to talk about for wrestlemania is the raw women's title as asuka defense against the debuting Rhea, or the recently debuting rhea ripley she's not on nxt no more or she's got a whole new attitude because she screwed Asuka over that tag match this week on Raw. Lord. Are you excited about this one about Rhea Ripley on the main roster now? You know, it's weird. Last year I was. This year I'm like, she's just another chick. And I got to tell you almost to the, the reason exactly why was this year's Royal Rumble. And every other chick looked like a punk rock girl. Yeah, at the time, Rhea Ripley was so unique and so had so much momentum. And they just cut her legs out from under her. It's been a rebuilding year for Rhea. And I think that this is a time for her to kind of like my hypothetical I was talking, I was hinting at with the SmackDown Women's title match. I think this would be a great kind of passing of the torch weekend. We have Bianca and Rhea each winning their respective mm -hmm. title matches and being kind of the new face of the women's division. Trying maybe transition from like the horsewomen phase and the Oscar phase right. and like kind of go into this new class. Oh no, she's getting that win back. Believe that. That's happening. Yeah. And, That's I, th happening. and I think that like Oscar, it's like, it's crazy to think how long she's been the champion. And like how many great Oscar matches for the championship in this last year can you remember? Like, not a ton. There were some really good tag team matches with her. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so I think that, like, Asuka has been a good 
big a good steward of the championship right. but i think it's time to hand it off and have Rhea you know bounce back from what happened last year at wrestlemania and this will be kind of the validation right and yeah just have her come back and win the championship it's all real and finally it sure feels like history is kind of repeating itself again biggs you know do you remember it wasn't too long ago where there was like a singles match planned for wrestlemania between a returning legend winning the royal rumble and this other champion that like for what one reason or another people didn't like and then you've got Daniel Bryan finagling his way back into the mix. It, it does sound familiar. The only thing I will say, the only thing I will say, is that Blutista never had that year previous that Edge did. And that year previous, I don't care, dude. His reach, I was there. I was there in yeah, you were there at Houston Rumble. when he returned. That was a magical moment. There was never a Batista return magical moment. It was always like, oh, Triple H's friends is back. <laughs> right. You know, like, you know. So, anyways, yeah, I. I I can't really compare them, even though it does seem the same. I think the switch is for the better, yeah. honestly. I really do because you know. But but at the same time, I mean, uh, I don't think I personally don't think they should end it like they did WrestleMania 30. I don't think it's going to be the yes movement. Here. You don't think Daniel's going to win this one? I. I hmm. Who do you think is going to win? Roman. I think Roman's going to retain. I really think that they need to hold him as that head of the table until they get that rock match. And that, and that's that's me hoping you have a match that needs a stadium, not a stadium that needs a match. And that's what they did in 32 is that they, they really had a stadium that needed a match. And they never had that match. It was Roman and, and Triple H, but it was kind of flat. Yeah, right. And You so, remember that. Right, we were there. And so I think that, yeah, I agree that like a Roman rock match is still on the table. But I don't think you could justify having Roman stay the champion until, like, what, two manias from now? <laughs> When they're in LA, right. that's not happening. So I think that um, I, I I'm gonna say that the miracle happens again, and Daniel Bryan wins the championship again. I don't think Edge is gonna win it, and if I had to pick someone besides Daniel, it'd be Roman. So, but I mean, I'm gonna just kind of you know kind of go crazy here and say Daniel Bryan is my pick to win, and the history is gonna repeat itself. That's kind of one last hurrah before he inevitably like winds starts winding down. Well, those are our picks for these two massive nights of WrestleMania night, uh, two nights and change if you count SmackDown, I guess. We are gonna be coming back here on Saturday and Sunday nights talking about WrestleMania after it happened. It's gonna be a double bender for us, man. We're gonna be hanging out. We're gonna be exhausted here on the grind, but it's gonna be a great time, and uh, we hope. Hope you enjoy WrestleMania this weekend and whatever other infinite number of wrestling shows happening in Tampa and beyond happening this weekend. It's a big old time for wrestling fans and right. wrestling YouTubers and for wrestlers and everyone. So go out and support some wrestling no matter what form it's in this weekend. And the good news, Brian, for us is no matter what happens at this WrestleMania, there's no possible way that we'll be standing in the rain for four hours. Nope. Afterwards. No waiting for trains for us in New Jersey. No, <laughs> sir. 